What's up YouTube, Jeff Beck again from DopeTechDaily.com and today I just want to do a quick vlog to thank all of you guys for 30,000 subscribers. We just hit the milestone today. Um, I really, really appreciate it. Over the past year I've had a lot of fun doing these videos, making uh, you guys uh, great content that sort of gives you some information about technology or just my thoughts and I'm really, really thankful that so many people are interested in what I think. Um, I didn't really think that this channel was going to take off when I started. So I really, really sincerely appreciate that. Um, now while I'm here and thanking you guys for 30,000 subscribers, I also wanted to give some thoughts on the Moto Z and the Moto Z Force uh, that Motorola and Lenovo announced at Tech World a few days ago. A lot of people on Twitter were asking about my thoughts. Uh, I've been a little bit busy uh, lately. Some of you guys probably saw I bought a car and then I'm also teaching a couple of courses for the summer uh, during the month of June. So I've got sort of a really busy schedule in June. In July and August, I'll be back to making videos more on a full-time basis. Uh, but a few thoughts about the Moto Z and the Moto Z Force. I was really impressed with the modular uh, um, implementation that Motorola and Lenovo went with. I think it's much better than what LG did with the LG G5. You guys know some of my thoughts about that phone were not so great, mainly because the modular aspect was sort of promoted, but then there weren't very many modules available. Also, the way they integrated the modules made it difficult to swap. There were build quality issues, etc. The modules on the Moto Z and the Moto Z uh, Force, they are very easy to hot swap in and out. You've got the style swap covers, uh, which gives you a lot of options to customize your phone. And then you also have a couple of modules that I think are more useful than what LG did. LG had the camera grip, and then they also had the B&O uh, audio DAC, which wasn't even available in the US, which was another problem with the G5. Uh, but the two modules, I really like both of them from Motorola. You've got the Pico projector and also the JBL uh, speaker. This was a great idea, in my opinion, to put a uh, Bluetooth speaker essentially in a module so you can carry around that extra audio quality if you want to watch a video or anything like that. Now you don't even need to carry around a Bluetooth speaker. You can just slap the module on the back of your phone and then you've got a more portable experience. Also, the Pico projector, while it's not very high resolution, it's a little gimmicky, but I think it's a cool idea and it's something that I, as a professor, I could see myself perhaps using to share with colleagues or something uh, during a seminar, during a colloquium. It's something that I could see very useful for a specialty market, and as long as they make them available, that's definitely going to give them a plus over the G5. In addition, they've opened up their module components to developers and sort of given them an open platform to create further modules, and they've invested some money in doing that. So because they're really seriously invested in developers creating additional modules, I think we could definitely see this become a thing when it comes to Motorola and Lenovo. And also they claim that the modules will fit future generations of the phone, which would definitely be a huge thing when it comes to the longevity of the modules and getting consumers to actually purchase them. Now, the modularity aspect and the integration of it was probably my favorite part of the Moto Z, the Moto Z Force. My least favorite parts are the fact that this is going to be coming a Verizon exclusive during the summer and not becoming unlocked until the fall. Uh, also, I don't know why Motorola decided or Lenovo decided to announce this so early. Uh, it's not even going to be up for pre-order till July for Verizon. Probably not even going to arrive on Verizon until late July or early August. We have no exact details. It's probably not going to come for unlocked phones until September. That's a long way away. And in addition, Motorola and Lenovo now have to compete with the Galaxy Note 7. They got to compete with the iPhone 7. All of these big phones that are coming out that are going to steal attention away when these phones finally launch. So I think that's a huge problem, the fact they launched it too early. And also it's coming a Verizon exclusive Droid Edition first, uh, which I think no one likes. Uh, the Droid Edition phones, they have terrible support. Uh, and in general, they sort of are an afterthought after they get released. So you're going to spend all this money for Verizon bloatware, uh, poor updates, uh, and then people who are not on Verizon can't even get the phone to the fall. They'll probably have lost interest. Uh, there's no pricing information either, which was unfortunate. The other thing that I think is a little uh, concerning is you've got a 2600 milliamp hour battery in the regular Moto Z uh, for a QHD screen that might not get you very good battery life. That's uh, pretty close to what we saw with the Galaxy S6, which had terrible battery life. Uh, now, of course, the Motorola phones are running closer to stock Android uh, than the Samsung phones. So that could be something that could improve that battery life, give you that extra longevity. But we'll have to wait and see about that. So the next thing is the camera hump on the back. Uh, while you can make that flush by swapping in the, the modules, which is great, you can customize your phone, and then you don't see that camera hump because it's an incredibly thin phone, which I do like. 
Um, you do have that camera hump there if you're not using one of the modules and also you see the pens on the back. Uh, if you have the white version, you also see the sensors on the very bottom. It's very evident, uh, very strange looking in my opinion. But I mean, if you like a really thin phone, it might be fine. But I think a lot of people are not gonna like that camera hump and that's gonna force them to buy one of these style swap covers. So essentially you're paying for the price of the phone plus a style swap cover if you're someone like me and you really don't want that camera hump. Because if you sit that on a table and you're trying to type, that's definitely gonna rock the phone back and forth. I can guarantee that without even getting it in house. Uh, and then the last thing perhaps uh, that's interesting is the lack of a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. They've done away with that in favor of passing it through the USB type C port. There will be an adapter included in the box uh, which you can then connect your headphones. But that is a bit concerning just like people are concerned about Apple going with the lightning headphones on the iPhone 7 possibly. Uh, it just depends on how much you are invested into audio, etc., and whether you mind using the adapter. Now, to me, it's not the biggest deal, but personally, I could go for a slightly thicker phone with a bigger battery, which would then necessitate the ability to still have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. I don't really see any need to get rid of it personally, um, but perhaps that's just me. You guys can leave your thoughts below. Otherwise, it looks like a great phone, premium build from what I've seen from people who were there. Um, the modules do look really, really nice. Uh, the camera quality seems like it's going to be good. We'll have to see more testing from that. Motorola really stepped that up last year with the Moto X Pure Edition. Uh, so it could be a win. It's just going to be a long time before we actually can purchase these phones. Uh, also, a lot of people were concerned that Motorola was dropping the Moto X line, but supposedly they've come out yesterday and said that that's not the case. Moto Z is not replacing Moto X. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see if that means they're going to have a new Moto X this year or what's going to happen with that. So overall, I'm not completely down on the Moto Z. I think it has some issues uh, in addition to how well it's going to sell because of the competition when it finally releases. Uh, but I definitely will purchase one of the Moto Zs. I may even get one from Verizon um, as much as I hate the carrier, brand, the carrier branding. So I give you guys an early look uh, and then I'll pick up the Unlocked Edition later and we'll sort of do a little comparison. All right, guys, so those are my thoughts on Motorola's Tech World event. If you guys have any thoughts on the Moto Z, the Moto Z Force, uh, drop those comments below. Uh, we can talk about it. Also, again, really big thanks for 30,000 subscribers. I will have a giveaway coming up soon to thank you guys. I just need to get that planned uh, and probably do that around the 5 million view mark. That way I can celebrate 30,000 subscribers and 5 million views sort of together. All right, guys, so that's it for me in this vlog. I appreciate you guys watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoy my content, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.